What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So in this video, I'm going to go over who I think are the most underrated players in the game right now. Let's go talk about it. Starting off my list at number 10, I have Joe Mansupply, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, they're not really in it as of right now. 10 games back in the division, six and a half out in the wild card. But one of the bright spots on this team has been Joe Mansupply. Look at these numbers. My goodness, 28 games, a 0.36 ERA, a 1.47 FIP, a 0.9 Fangraph war. He's been a big part of this bullpen where you have Melanson and Kennedy at the back end as well. But man supply, he has been absolutely nuts. If you go take a look at the leaderboards right now on Fangraphs when it comes to relievers, he ranks 15th overall in Fangraph war. But if you take a look at ERA, he ranks second overall. Man supply has been really good this year. I think he deserves some more attention. At number nine, I have Eli Morgan. Speaking of relievers, let's talk about another really good reliever out there that I think is not being talked about enough. Eli Morgan on the Cleveland Guardians. Are you kidding me? These are fantastic numbers. 20 games, he did get a start, but a 1.62 ERA, a 2.50 FIP for the Guardians that are coming on strong right now. A game back in the Central. They're holding on to a wild card spot as of right now. But Eli Morgan, one of the setup men, you're going to hear more about Emmanuel Clace. That's the closer. That's the star of the show in the bullpen. But Eli Morgan has been extremely good. If you go take a look here, he is second overall in strikeout to walk ratio. Actually, Joe Mantiply was number one. I forgot to mention that just a second ago. But if we go take a look here at the leaderboards when it comes to Fangraph war, Eli Morgan is 12th overall among all qualified relievers. He's having himself a really good season. He's been a big part of this Cleveland Guardians bullpen. He needs a little more attention as one of the better relievers in the game. At number eight, I have Ross Stripling. Whenever you think of the Toronto Blue Jays rotation, I doubt that Stripling is the first guy to come to mind. And I can see why when you got guys like Kevin Gosman, Alec Manoa, Jose Barrios. I know Barrios is not having a normal Jose Barrios season, but that's a guy I feel like I hear a little bit more than someone like Ross Stripling. But I think we need to start talking about Ross Stripling a little bit more. He's been in and out of the bowl, uh, in and out of the rotation, 16 games overall, eight starts. But look at these numbers here, a 3.28 ERA, a 2.98 FIP. That FIP actually, when you take a look, when it comes to his starts as a starter, he has a 2.68 FIP, and that actually ranks 10th overall right behind Joe Musgrove and ahead of some big game guys Shane Bieber Shane McClanahan Nestor Cortez is down here Corbin Burns the Cy Young winner last year I mean my goodness Ross Stripling he's been a big part of that Blue Jays rotation and I don't think he's been talked about enough at number seven I have G-Man Choi he is having himself a pretty solid season take a look at the numbers 48 games and 181 plate appearances he's slashing 286 381 and 481 with a 154 for WRC plus those are really solid numbers Tampa Bay their offense this year has been slumping they've had some injuries Wander Franco Brandon Lau but G-Man Choi has been a big part of this offense where again they've been slumping they rank 21st overall in offense this year but G-Man Choi has stepped up in a big way and if you actually take a look at the leaderboards among players with at least 150 plate appearances G-Man Choi ranks 16th overall in WRC plus he's creating a lot of offense for the Rays and I love what he's doing. I wish he would get talked about a little bit more. At number six, I have Austin Hayes. The Baltimore Orioles are completely out of it, but Austin Hayes, he's having himself a really solid season. Over 63 games and 263 plate appearances, he's slashing 280, 342, 456, a 129 WRC+, plus, nine homers, 37 RBIs. Austin Hayes, he's been very good, and he's also been very good out in left field. He's played all over the outfield, but his best spot has been in left field. 337 innings, three defensive runs saved, a 2.6 UZR. And to me, Austin Hayes, that's a name I don't really hear much of when it comes to the Baltimore Orioles. I hear more about Cedric Mullins, Trey Mancini, even Santander, uh, Adley Rushman as well coming up this year. You don't ever hear anything about Austin Hayes. I think he's one of the more solid players in the game. And unfortunately, with the Orioles not having a great season, I think if they were having a good season, you would hear more about this guy. Uh, but Austin Hayes, I love what he's doing this year. At number five, I have Nick Pavetta. It's time to start regarding Nick Pavetta as one of the best starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. Nick Pavetta is having himself a very good season for the Red Sox. Now, 
he did not get off to a great start. If you go take a look at his splits in the first month of the season, he was absolutely horrible. If you go take a look, in April, he had an 8.27 ERA. Hitters were hitting 297 against him with a 410 on base and a 516 slugging. I was very worried about Nick Pavetta at that point. But since then, this guy has just completely turned around. In May, a 2.11 ERA. In June, a 2.00 ERA. My goodness. Now, because of that bad first month, he's only going to rank 24th overall. But if you take a look since May 1st, he is third overall in Fangraph War. He has just completely figured it out. And to me, I think we need to start talking about him as one of the better starting pitchers in the game. And also, when it comes to his contract, he is worth, so far, $13.6 million, And we're not even in July yet. He's getting paid $2.65 million this year. Are you kidding me? My goodness, what a bargain Nick Pavetta's been. He's been huge because... Obviously, the numbers speak for themselves, but the Red Sox have had a lot of injuries to this rotation. Evaldi and Whitlock are currently on the rotation. Sale and Paxton have been out all year. He has stepped up in a huge way. Pavetta, like I said, it's time to start looking at this guy as one of the better starting pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. At number four, I have Brandon Drury. Brandon Drury has bounced around in his career. He was with the Diamondbacks, the Blue Jays, the Mets last year. But with the Reds, they are pretty bad this year but with the Reds this year he's having arguably his best season overall if you take a look at these numbers well his best season came back in 2017 where he had a 1.8 fan graph war his career high in home runs is 16 back in 2016 with 53 RBIs but look at his numbers so far through 57 games he's hitting 268 with a 332 on base and a 516 slugging a 130 WRC plus he's at 14 home runs right now 35 RBIs he is absolutely on pace to just smash those numbers that he put up in 2016 and 2017 uh Brandon Drury I really like his game he can play multiple positions he's played third second played a couple games at first he's played a couple games at short I think Brandon Drury this is a name to look out for at the deadline I think he could be really valuable to some teams out there could you possibly put him with Luis Castillo in a trade I think you could. Why not? Brandon Drury, look out for him. I think he's going to end up being with a different team after the deadline. And I think he's going to be really solid for the rest of the season. At number three, I have Garrett Cooper. Garrett Cooper has been doing some great things with the bat this year. Take a look here. 57 games, 233 plate appearances. He's hitting 312 with a 382 on base, a 454 slugging, and a 140 WRC+. Plus. He currently ranks 34th in offense on fan graphs. But look at his WRC+, plus, a 140 WRC+. Plus. That's actually more than his way more popular teammate, Jazz Chisholm. If we actually take a look at some Google trends, Friends here, Jazz Chisholm is obviously way more popular. This is one of the more fun players in the game. No one's really looking at Garrett Cooper, but Garrett Cooper, my goodness, he's been really good this year. Look at that on base, 382. Let's actually go take a look really quick when it comes to the on base percentage leaderboards. Garrett Cooper with that 382 on base, that currently ranks 18th in all of Major League Baseball. I think Garrett Cooper, he deserves a little more attention. At number two, I have Andres Jimenez. Jimenez has been a huge part of the Guardians this year, who I talked about earlier with Eli Morgan. The Guardians right now, 34 and 28, one game back in the division. They have a wild card spot. Jimenez has been huge for them. He's always been looked at as more of a glove first kind of a guy, but at the plate this year, he's having a really solid year. He's hitting 302 with a 342 on base, a 500 slugging, a 140 WRC plus. Those are really solid numbers. And if we take a look at the leaderboards among second basemen, he ranks sixth overall in offense. And if we take a look at the fielding leaderboards, he ranks second overall in defensive runs saved just behind Tommy Edmond, who's now playing shortstop for the Cardinals. But Andres Jimenez, man, he has been really good. I absolutely think he needs to be talked about more. I definitely think he needs to go to the All-Star game this year. And coming in at number one, I have Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond is having himself a dandy of a season this year. Let's take a look at the numbers. Over 67 games and 296 plate appearances so far. He's hitting 280 with a 356 on base, a 420 slugging, a 125 WRC plus, seven homers. He's driven in 29 RB. 
RBIs, but he's also got 15 stolen bases as well. He has been phenomenal offensively, but it's not just the offense with Tommy Edmond. He's been playing great defense. He was at second base originally, but then Nolan Gorman came up. He was playing great defense at second base. He had nine defensive runs saved. That ranked first overall. Still ranks first overall among all second basemen, but then he moved over to short when Gorman came up, and he's been playing great defense there as well. Three defensive runs saved, a 1.7 UZR. Man, oh man, Tommy Edmond has been the real deal, and and when you take a look at the Fangraph leaderboards overall, he ranks seventh in Fangraph war. Are you kidding me? This guy's having a phenomenal season, but look who is in front of him, just in front of him when it comes to overall Fangraph war, Paul Goldschmidt. Now, Paul Goldschmidt has been by far the best overall offensive player. He's going to have a negative defense because first base, not as valuable of a position as, say, shortstop and second base. But Tommy Edmund, man, he has been phenomenal just as much as Paul Goldschmidt has been but Edmund is going to just provide more of the overall game actually if we go take a look at baseball reference Tommy Edmund right now ranks number one overall on baseball reference are you kidding me Paul Goldschmidt on baseball reference they got him at fifth they have Edmund at number one are you kidding me and it's just funny because when you take a look at the Google trends Paul Goldschmidt is easily the more searchable player than Tommy Edmund I think Edmund deserves way more attention right now he's not getting enough of it but everyone that is my list tell me what you think down below I know there are going to be some guys that are not on this list so please in the comments let me know do you think there's anyone that should have been added here do you think some guys should have moved down up let me know what you think down below in the comments but that's all I have for right now thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time